with Dr. William Pelham Jr., Professor of Psychology and Psychiatry at Florida International University and the Director of the Center for Children and Families. Um, Dr. Pelham will be talking to us today about Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for inviting me, Tuma. So the first question I have is, um, how does a parent know if their child has ADHD? ADHD has long been defined as having a set of symptoms. The symptoms are common aspects of the way children behave and the way they act and think. Inattention, problems paying attention, problems with impulse control, and problems with activity level are the three core characteristics of ADHD. That means a child is not finishing things he or she starts at school or having trouble finishing homework, uh, a child interrupting other people a lot, answering questions before they're done, or interrupting other kids in games and that sort of thing. Those are the, the DSM, that's the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual. That, those are the definitions of ADHD. And who can make a diagnosis of ADHD? A diagnosis, if you followed the DSM procedures, they're pretty clear cut. A, a psychiatrist, a psychologist, a school psychologist, a social worker, a pediatrician, all sorts of people can make a diagnosis. And even parents can, can find on the internet lists of the DSM symptoms of ADHD. But it's much more important for a parent to think about not what the symptoms are, but what the problems in daily life functioning are. There are lots of kids who have symptoms of ADHD. At two-year-olds, almost every two-year-old has all the symptoms of ADHD. But as they get to be older, then most of those go away. And the symptoms are only important if they occur a lot more than they do in a child of the same age, and if they cause problems. So the problems that are typically characteristic of ADHD kids are problems getting along with other children, getting into fights, uh, disrupting games, with the result that the child doesn't get invited over to the other kids' houses in the neighborhood, or doesn't get invited to parties at school, uh, problems functioning in the classroom at school, and causing disruptions at home with siblings, with parents, and so forth. And it's those problems in daily life functioning that are the most important things for a parent to think about fixing. Do children outgrow ADHD? Unfortunately, for a long time, people thought that kids did outgrow ADHD, but for a long time now, we've, we've known that they don't. It's a, a chronic disorder of childhood, just like asthma or diabetes. You're born with it, and you're gonna have it for a long time. The key for a parent is to figure out uh, how to manage it and treat it over the long term. Um, so what causes ADHD? We don't know what causes ADHD. Most of the speculation is that it has something to do with genetics, that sometimes you inherit genes from your parents uh, or genes get passed down uh, over the years from the people who preceded your parents uh, in, your, in your genetic history. And, uh, and what we know from that is that if you have ADHD, you have a higher chance than not of having a child with ADHD. And if you're a child with ADHD, you have a higher chance than not of having parents who have ADHD. So we know that genetics is important, but it's not the only thing. It's not always the case that someone with ADHD has children with ADHD. And it's definitely not always the case that if you have a child with ADHD, one of his parents does have it. But we just don't know what the cause is. It's uh, hard to look inside people's brains. Can't do that very well yet, so it's hard for us to know exactly what it is. We do know a few things that it's not. So for example, we know that it's not what you eat. For years, people have speculated that uh, maybe artificial food colors or uh, sugar or other things that you eat, and it's not any of those things. So we've ruled out some causes, but we don't know what the final cause is. So what practices have good scientific evidence for helping kids with ADHD? That's a good question. Uh, there are two treatments that are very effective in the short run. There have been lots and lots of scientific studies that show that they work. One, the most commonly used, is stimulant medication. Uh, that, that's a particular type of medication, psychoactive medication that a child takes that's known to help children with ADHD in the short run, helps them behave, helps them pay attention and focus, and so forth. The other is called behavior therapy, and that's teaching skills to parents and to teachers and to the children themselves that help them all learn to change their behavior and deal with the ADHD in a more adaptive way. A third treatment would be you can combine those two and make multimodal or combined treatment. So those three treatments 
have a lot of good scientific evidence as effective short-term treatments. And what are some treatments that don't have any scientific evidence for ADHD? There are lots of treatments that don't have good scientific evidence, and unfortunately they're used a lot in, in, uh, in the world. So in this country, in the United States, for example, uh, often parents will take their child to a mental health clinic and a clinician will do individual one-on-one -on -one therapy with a child with ADHD. That doesn't have any evidence for its helpfulness at all. That would just cost the parent a lot of money and a lot of wasted hope with their child and probably frustrate the child who won't enjoy going to a clinic and sitting with an adult for an hour a week. In addition, a diet obviously doesn't, since we talked earlier about how diet doesn't cause ADHD, so you can't use a diet to fix ADHD. Um, things that are direct, where people try directly to retrain the brain by having a child do cognitive tasks on the computer or biofeedback in the computer. There's very little evidence that those work, even though they're widely applied, widely used, and widely available, and very expensive. So for those evidence-based treatments that you mentioned, the behavior therapy that you mentioned, um, what is a parent's role in those treatments? That's a good question. And the, the major emphasis in behavior therapy is teaching parents better parenting skills. One of the problems in, uh, in our country is that Anybody can be a parent. You don't need a license to be a parent. You need a license to fish, but not to be a parent. And you have a child, and you don't know what you're supposed to do to raise them. You don't know what good parenting practices are. And parenting practices play a major role in children's outcomes. So we teach parents better parenting skills. And we do that kind of like in a course. So parents come in. They can come in individ for individual sessions, or they can come in groups. And we teach them more effective strategies in managing their ADHD children's behavior. So uh, you mentioned what parents can do, but is there something that teachers can do in the school? Oh, that's a good point, because parents also should be working with the child's teacher to improve the school situation. And the easiest thing to do that has by far the most research is for the teacher and the parent together to design what's called the daily report card. A daily report card is just what it sounds like. It's a report card that comes home every day that lists each child's daily goals for school that day. And for ADHD kids, that's typically finishing their work, uh, having them work accurately. It might be staying in their seat. It might be getting along well with other children. Uh, it might be minding the teacher when the teacher asks them to do something. So you spell those out in a daily report card. A teacher tracks it during the day, gives it to the child, and the child takes it home. And then the parent gives a positive consequence for the child for having worked hard all day at school and done a good job in their daily report card. So you mentioned that um, children with ADHD sometimes have problems with peers. Is there anything parents can do about this? That's the hardest thing to work on, but uh, parenting in the home situation, working with teachers at schools, and then working with peers are the big three things that need to be focused on in working with children with ADHD. Peers is really hard to do because you have to get in a setting where the ADHD child is playing with other children see what they're doing, and then figure out how you can fix it in that setting. That's hard for parents to do. Uh, clinicians or treatment clinics try to do that by having ADHD children participate in social skills training groups in the evening, for example, maybe while parents are in parent training, or running programs on Saturday, or schools run programs like that after school or even during school, or you can have intensive summer camp programs that are designed to treat children with ADHD. But it's really taking an ADHD child and teaching them more appropriate peer skills. Because in the same way that we teach a parent better parenting skills, we can teach a child the skills that help them get along better with other children. So you mentioned before that there are two um, evidence-based treatment options for ADHD, medication and behavior therapy. So what should a parent start out with first? Depends on parents' preferences. Now, what a, a good uh, clinician, whether that's their primary care pediatrician, or a psychologist or their school counselor or school teacher should be asking the parent is what do they think they should be doing? What would they like to be doing with their child? The therapist should describe to a parent what the different options are and then get their preferences. My preference, my recommendation to parents usually, is if you have two treatments that work and one of them has a greater risk of side effects than the other and they work about the same, you should try the one that has a lower risk of side effects first. And there's not much evidence that uh, doing good parenting training, teaching parents better parenting skills, has any negative impact on anybody. 
but medication can have side effects. So I think parents should always try behavioral interventions first and see how far they can get with the behavioral interventions and then add medication in as a second line treatment uh, when the behavioral interventions are not enough. Often if you do that, you can get away with using a very low dosage of medication which has lower side effects than a high dose which you might have to use if you were only using medication. And are there any benefits of using medication in the long run? Well, that's one of the problems with medication is it has very large effects in the short term. It really does help children's behavior at school and at home and in the neighborhood. But the long-term studies have shown that it doesn't matter how long you give it. Eventually, ADHD teenagers stop taking medication. They don't like to take it. And that when a child stops taking it and you look four or five years later at how they're doing, they're no different from a child who received no treatment at all. So medication alone is not a good long-term treatment. It's not something parents should rely on. Always do, if you're going to do medication, always do combined approach. Are there any benefits of using a combined approach or behavioral therapy in the long run? Uh, that's a good question. There actually aren't any long-term studies of behavior therapy. So we don't know whether behavior therapy in the long run is gonna work well. We know that medication doesn't. In theory, we think behavior therapy will because it focuses on parenting, peer relationships, and school functioning. And those are the three categories that, that drive or produce long-term outcomes in kids. So if we can make those three domains better, we should be producing better outcomes. We don't have the data yet to show that, but in theory, that's what makes sense to me. And are there any other tips or bits of advice that you would give um, parents who have children with ADHD? I would suggest to parents that what they want, what they really want, is their child to have good functioning in the long run. They want the kids to grow up and reach their potential, whatever their potential is. And that means don't think too much about short-term treatments only. What can I do with medication, say, for this school year? But be thinking, what can I do in the long run? And that means making sure that the child is successful in what he's doing in the peer domain, in the school domain, and in the home domain, that he feels good about himself, that you're being consistent, you're being positive with your child. You do that and you can get the school to do that and you can do that consistently for a long period of time, then you can hope that what you're gonna produce is a good long-term outcome and the child will live up to his potential as an adolescent and adult. Thank you for being with us today. Thanks for talking to me.